Welcome back, guys, to our Pokemon Black playthrough. We are getting pretty close to the end of our journey, but I think right now we're about to head to Marvelous Bridge, which I don't know if we've ever been there before. I don't think we have, right? We've been to a few unique bridges, but not this one. I decided to find a new Pokemon partner around Route 13. Ace Trainer. Hey, hey, you want to try a triple battle? Oh, not interested. Okay, so she's... So this... I was reading about this. So, um... At this gate, at this portion of the area, this Ace Trainer challenge us, will challenge us daily to either a triple battle or a rotation battle. This is the only trainer in the entire game that will challenge you to this kind of battle. I'm not really interested in doing that, but she, you can do that daily if you want. Question is empty. What do people buy from the vending machine? To keep checking on that, this is my life. Wow, that sucks. Okay, so we've never been to this area before. Marvelous bridge is really mind-boggling, so I'm taking a rest. Okay. I'm just running into doors, apparently. All right, beautiful, and we're kidding. Ladies and gentlemen, Marvelous Bridge. We're just gonna run across the cro top here and see what's going on. Ah, so much magnificent scenery. Oh, health wing, cool. Never got my Trinitar, by the way. Decided that I wasn't gonna evolve Pupitar. I just took too long. Hey, it's the Patrat lady from before. Will you come see the famous Patrat show at Marvelous Bridge? Sure. Okay, I'm gonna get all fired up. Ready, all Patrat? Everyone gather up! Cute. The Patrat that I will have you follow today is... This, the little Patrat with the brightest smile. It's holding a big mushroom. Ready, set, go! What am I doing? Outside. Inside left. Outside left. Inside right. Inside right. Outside left. Inside right. Oh, I think I just lost it. Okay, find that. I think it was this one. That Patrat is holding a big mushroom, right? I think you are totally correct. Hey, I was right. Cool. Sweet. I, I lost it for a second, so that was kind of a guess. That marks the grand finale of our Patrat show. Thank you, one and all. Neat. That was kind of cool. But anyway, yeah, I didn't, uh, I decided, you know what, there's no reason to try and look around for a Trinitar. We're so close to the end of the game. Spending time, if, like, leveling up Pupitar doesn't really make sense. And it's level 50. Level 55 to evolve. Everything else in my team is between 70 and 80 something. I was like, screw it. That I'm not going to bother. What do we got here? Whoa, what are you guys doing here? Ew, huh? Getsis is gone. He went off somewhere alone after we rescued him from the castle. From the day Getsa saved our lives, we have sworn to be loyal to him, even now, after he ordered us not to search for him. Also, Getsa said to give you this. A kiss. <laughs> yeah, I'm an orb. Doesn't that have something to do with the, the Platinum Legendaries, I think? Or I guess the Sinnoh Legendaries, I should say. As well as this. Lustrous Orbs, I think so, right? Hmm. And this also... I don't know if I recognize this. We'll do some reading in a second and figure out what's going on. Mark, put the Grisius Orb in there. Would you get this? Where did he find these? What was he planning to do with them? Why did he give them to you? There's no way to know now. Is he testing you or using you? We, the Shadow Triad, have always been and always will be the loyal servants of Getsis. And Getsis' ambitions will never cease. Never shall we meet again. Farewell. Okay. Let's see what it says. Okay, a couple things. Uh, it says, as you near the west end of the bridge, the Shadow Triad suddenly appears. After they saved him from capture at End's castle, Getsis went off somewhere alone. He had apparently saved their lives once, and they had sworn loyalty to him. Complying with his wishes, they refused to search for him, He and, uh, and had his one last request for them, and the three of them give you these various orbs. They don't know how or why they had them, but they say he wanted you to have them. As complete, the trio disappears one last time. So let me take a look and see what these are all about, because I don't remember. My memory sucks. The Adamant Orb is a held type of item introduced in Gen 4, boosts power with dragon and steel type moves held by Dialga. Okay, so there we go. So Dialga, Palkia, gotcha. The Grizzius Orb, that one I don't recognize though. Uh, it's introduced Pokemon Platinum, boosts power of dragon and ghost type moves held by Giratina and changes Giratina into its origin form. Okay. 
All right, it also says, sometimes a girl is standing next to the man on the bridge's east end. When you approach, she disappears. The old woman at the foot of the elevator tells you that there used to be a girl who lived around here who always played with Abra before the bridge was built. So she's probably just teleporting away. Famous Patrat show. Lastly, I think there's only one other thing of, of interest here. The Magikarp salesman. I, I don't know if it's this guy, is it? Son, I have a deal for you, and for you alone. Here's your chance. I will sell you the secret Pokemon Magikarp for an unbelievable $500. How about it? Interested? Eh. Oh, that's too bad. It is unique, though, because I don't think you can get Magikarp in the game any other way. Uh, it says, on the Bridges West End, a man will sell you Magikarp for $500. Unlike previous Pokemon games, the fish... Okay, it is foreign to the region, so you won't find it normally. After enough training, it'll evolve into Gyarados, of course. Uh, so if you should decide to take him up on his offer, return here with an empty slot in your party. So yeah, so there you go. That's a thing. Get yourself a magic carp, level it up, and boom, there you go. Alright, let's see what else we got. Parasol inside the gate. Well, I really don't want to get wet and dry and dirty. Okay, whatever. Oh, awesome! That just made my day! This vending machine gave me an extra drink for free! They yeah, don't give it to me or anything. Pretty bastard. I am me, you are you. You really don't know what to do when sudden someone suddenly says that, do you? I don't care. Oh, about 16. The Hustle and Bustle. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go through this as well. Route 16, and then there is one more spot after that, but I don't think I'm going to do that in this video, so we'll just go ahead and take these guys on. I'm assuming they're going to want to fight, right? I ride a bicycle, I feel fresh winds, and I win Pokemon battles. This kid probably has more powerful Pokemon than everyone we've faced so far. Oh, it's a guy. Never mind. Cyclos Hector, still. Oh, I guess not. What level is that? What? Huh. Why is he so... Why is so... Could we have gone this way before? Is that what this is about? Interesting. Yeah, you win Pokemon battles. Yeah, have fun fighting my level 86 Haxorus with their level 20 Pokemon. Enjoy, Hector. A pleasant wind is carrying a defeat. Now it is stopping here, though. Okay, let's see what it says about Route 16, because I thought... Oh, this is important. Okay, I see. Uh, Route 16 is a short road that links Marvelous Bridge to Nimbasa City. A break in the trees on the north side leads to Lost Lorne Forest. People seem to always get lost there, even though the forest is fairly small. Go west and use strength to clear the boulder away. To the north is TM66 Payback, and a charcoal lies to the east behind the east, rather behind the fence. Cut down the small tree for rare candy. Okay. Oh, he's a trainer. Fine, whatever. I'm looking for a place that is not in any guidebook. Oh, these Pokemon are going to be all super weak too, huh? We can clear these guys out very quickly. I would, You know what? Because of the time, we are going to go ahead and just do it all. We're just going to go ahead and do everything that I was planning on doing. Marvelous Bridge, Route 16, and then uh, the next area, Lost Lorne Forest. We'll do it all together. Your strength. I want to put it in a guidebook. Heard. Oh, there's a lot of trainers here. Ling -a -ling -a -ling. I have a speed. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Just get it done. Krissa. literally straight up cutting every Pokemon that I see. I'm upset because I lost, so I'll ring the bell. Tingling! <laughs> Ridiculous. Alright, so I think... Let's see, what do we got here? There's a bunch of trainers that we're gonna fight and just blow through super easy because... You know, they're weak compared to us. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a Max Repel, just in case. 
and it just gets buried by everything they pick up. Items that you pick up should drop at the bottom, I think. Maybe they do do that if, through organization, and I'm just not doing it. All right. Because all roads are connected, I can go anywhere and challenge anyone. Not sure I like your attitude. All right, Laura. Swad Loon. If they're so weak, does that sort of suggest that I could have been here before? I wish at a certain level, if you're 50 levels or more higher up than someone who used to protect, you could just break right through it. Shatter the protect and cut the Pokemon down. I felt the bond between you and your Pokemon. I bet you did. Now, once we get through Lost Lorne, I am really looking forward to explaining what's going on here, because there's some very unique um, event stuff going on in this area that uh, I won't be able to do. I just won't. It's very, it's also very, very niche. And you'll understand what I'm talking about in just a moment after I beat these guys. Guys, your tiny, cute, little accessory Pokemon just don't stand a chance. What are you thinking? I, I feel like you're, you'd have to be morally irresponsible and lose your Pokemon trainer's license if you're throwing out a drill burp against Haxorus at this level. Alright, let's head through. Okay, this is where we gotta go now. So we're gonna cut this down. And then we're gonna go ahead and enter the forest. I don't know how long the events will take place into the forest, so I'm probably just gonna do it all now. Lawn Forest. Supposed to be pretty small, right? Lost Lorne Forest. Lost Lorne Forest is a tiny wood area uh, with little more than river to cover it. Directly north of the entrance is a big mushroom sitting on a tree stump. If you climb up the waterfall to the east, you can pick up a rare candy on the river's east bank. I don't really care to do that. Should be pretty easy to get through this. I don't think it's very dense of a forest. Yeah, this is where we... Okay. So this is a super interesting storyline going on here, or plot among the story. You know, there are people in the world with many different values. Some people enjoy things you might not think are fun. Having a lot of different values in the world makes it a richer place. That's what I think, anyway. I really enjoy traveling around the world and talking with different people, but the woman who lives here seems to think living quietly by herself is important. So, this is curious. So we're gonna go inside. There's a woman here, and she won't speak to you. There's nothing else that you can do. It's just coming in here and that's it. She's silent, she will not talk. There's nothing else to do. So I was doing some digging to kind of understand why, like what is that all about? So here's uh, here's the story behind Lost Lorne Forest. And I'm gonna read the whole thing just to kind of round this out to be centered around Lost Lorne Forest. Um, let's see. So, uh, during the visit to Lost Horn Forest in Pokemon Black and White, there is a backpacker sitting in front of a mobile trailer. If talked to, he talks about the woman living in the mobile trailer who thinks living by herself quietly is more important than traveling around the world like he does before he leaves. The mysterious woman inside the trailer can be interacted with, but won't say a word to the player. Okay, so sums up everything we've done so far. It's a special event, actually. Um, okay, so here's how this works. In order to trigger the event... The player will need one of the shiny legendary beasts from Johto to activate a special in-game event. So basically, exactly, let's repeat that. So uh, Entei, Raikou, and Suicune, you need a shiny version of them to bring here. Not just a normal one, a shiny one for some ridiculous reason. Okay. Once you bring one of them uh, with one of them, one of the shiny versions in your party, it'll initiate the event, causing the mysterious silent woman to emerge from the trailer with a screeching growl and attack the player. When the battle starts, the player will suddenly face one of the normal colored legendary beasts that, you know what? Hmm. Do I want to just do this? Might as well. Might as well just cheat through this, right? Uh, when the when the battle starts, uh, the player will suddenly face one of the normal colored legendary beasts that has a type advantage against the shiny legendary beast in the player's party. Um, 
So, for example, like if you have a shiny Raikou, uh, normal end table will appear in battle. Once the non-shiny legendary beast receives damage, the illusion will dissipate, revealing Zoroark. After the player catches, catches or defeats Zoroark, the true expanse of Lost One Forest is revealed, and the same backpacker reappears and becomes surprised that the suspicious woman was really a Zoroark in disguise, who was only protecting her home by deceiving both people and Pokemon using illusions. Ben states that Zoroark reacted strongly to the shiny legendary beast in the player's party and assumed that she may have been in some sort of previous conflict with it. So, all right, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to do this now. Um, I am going to do a little cheat. I'm going to catch the shiny Pokemon, put it in our party, and then I will meet you right back here in just a moment. All right, hang tight. All right, so I'm back. I did a little cheat, and I got myself a, <laughs> a level 100 shiny Raikou, which I thought was really freaking cool. Let's go ahead and just take a look at it just because it's, you know, super neat. Oh, I hit switch. Let's go to summary. Um, I've got it frontal in my party. Yeah, that's really cool. Retro Trainer Gazoo, whoever that is. Anyway. All right, sweet. So we got this. Let's go ahead and pop on in here and see what happens. Okay, so we get close, and now it's just automatically controlled. And she pops out and goes nuts. The suspicious woman attacked. I don't know how any other player would have been able to find this out without getting details. Like, from like someone who worked at Game Freak or Nintendo. This is ridiculous. The Entei appears at level 25. So, I don't know, and I don't know if I, I'm just going to hit it with Toxic, because I feel like if I hit it and knock it out, I don't know. Can it do those moves? It used Taunt. We'll see. Took some damage. Fine, you know what? Screw that. Rain down from the heavens on you, fake Entei. Ah, now it appears it is a Zoroark who's been poisoned, and it's now dead. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I knocked it out with that hit, but what was I supposed to do? Whatever, I, I don't understand what you expect. The Pokemon vanished deep into the forest. So, I, I mean, you could have caught it, I guess, but I didn't. But now look around, the forest is completely different. So, yeah, catch it or don't, whatever. It didn't really matter to me to catch it, but... I mean, I would have if the opportunity was there. Okay. So we knocked it out. And I believe that backpacker is supposed to show up again, isn't he? I guess not. Hmm. Yeah, the entire forest just changed its appearance. Oh, you, you're you not supposed to... Oh, I see. Okay, so you're not supposed to knock it out. Alright, we're going to switch over then. I'm not going to use my... Super crazy shiny Raikou to do the damage. You're not supposed to kill it. <laughs> the event itself is supposed to give you more information. That makes sense. Okay. So we're going to go to Pokemon. I'm going to go ahead and flop over to Haxorus. And then I'm just going to use False Swipe this time. It's good the game did that for me, because I don't know if I would have figured that out on my own. I thought I would have done something wrong. Which, I did. But. Vente's mouth being open there is kind of weird. All right, let's false swipe this thing. All right, Zoroark. I think I could probably just throw... You know what? We're going to use this open ball real fast. Should be easy. Gotcha. Got it, okay. Bonds between these Pokemon are very strong. They protect the safety of its pack by tricking its opponents. It looks like a freaking werewolf, though, doesn't it? Zoroark. There he is. So this was Zoroark's home, then. Zoroark was using these illusion to trick people and Pokemon. It wanted to keep people away from its lair. I heard this place was suspicious, so I came to have a look, but it looks like I was tricked as well. Zoroark really... Reacted strong in the Pokemon you have with you. There must be some history there, a quarrel or something. Such a beautiful field in a place like this. It's almost as if this lovely scenery is, in, is the illusion. So, I don't really know exactly what sort of event, like, or what lore or reason there would be that Zoroark would have a problem with a freaking legendary shiny beast that makes zero sense to me. I don't know what context there is. I don't know if that's a reference to something else. I'm just assuming this was just a very difficult puzzle that... 
they were hoping that no one would like or take forever to figure out rather but i don't know i uh either way that's that's what it was so there you go um yeah so that's that's pretty much it i don't think there's much more for us to do now i was doing some research as well to find out if there were find out if there were any um like special events um, kind of like how Platinum did, you get like a special item, you go and you, you know, do this thing at this place, and then it triggers a special event, and then you can do a small puzzle, and then, you know, you encounter a legendary or mythical Pokemon, there's nothing like that. I think, um, eventually what it came down to is instead of Game Creek designing so many, after Platinum, so many events, um, in-game events where you get items, it was just, oh, here's a, they go to GameStop, connect to the Wi-Fi, and here's a shiny, you know, legendary Pokemon at level 100 or something. So, I, that really bothered me, but, um... I think that's pretty much it. There's not really a whole lot going on. I heard Japan had some different things that Pokemon Black was all about. Um, getting special event Pokemon as well, but nothing special. No events, no puzzles. We got all the legendary Pokemon now. We got uh, Tornadus, Thunderous, Landorus. Um, we got the Tau Trio, those uh, dragons. Well, the two of the three. We can't get the other one because it's from another game. I actually ended up getting Entei, Raikou, and Suicune just because, you know, cheated to do this event. So I got those as well. But, you know, whatever. Either way, this was a pretty long playthrough. 60-some-odd episodes. I think, what, we wrapped at, what, roughly 64, 65, something like that. 64 episodes. I think this is what it'll turn out to be, um, combining it into one. But that's it. We, According to uh, Bulbapedia, as of now, we finally traveled everywhere in Unova. And the only thing that's really left to do is the Pokedex. As Black and White introduced 156 new Pokemon, bringing the grand total to a whopping 649 Pokemon. So we have our work cut out for us, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not really interested in going and catching all the Pokemon. Um, I did what I wanted to do. We did a playthrough of Pokemon Black. Hopefully you found this useful in some way, shape, or form. I had a lot, lot, lot more fun uh, doing this than I would have expected. Um, simply because I'm not really a big fan of the Unova Pokemon. But even after that, um, after we beat the main campaign and opened up all the uh, other Pokemon from other regions, um, from start to finish, I had a great time. Had a great time. The characters were interesting. The voices were fun. The comments you guys had, the tips you gave me were good. Um, really enjoyed that. Um, I, I, I think at this point, like, the only thing that really makes me sad is knowing that Black and White 2 were the last Pokemon generations of Gen 5 uh, that had this art style. And then they, you know, go into the 3D big head models, which I just, I don't know, not a big fan of that. I like the sprite work. I think it's a lot prettier. I really wish that games did a lot more like this. Um, but that's for another time, another conversation, I guess. But nonetheless, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you watched every single episode of the Pokemon Black playthrough, a special thank you to you. Special thanks to everyone who participated in getting comments um, out there uh, regarding tips, tricks, hints, whatever things that they wanted to let me know, because I don't know everything. Um, those that were throwing their name in the hat uh, to have uh, their name as a nickname for a Pokemon, that, that was pretty fun. Hopefully we can do that more later on with more people participating. But uh, either way... Had a great time with you guys. Had a great time with this game. Really looking forward to the future. Thanks again for watching this playthrough of Pokemon Black. Um, don't forget to like the video before you go. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you have any feedback additionally, uh, leave it down in the comment section. I'll get back to that too as quickly as I possibly can. Otherwise, I expect to see you next time when we start a brand new playthrough right here on the Mark and Nine channel where new episodes debut daily at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Seriously, thanks again for watching these episodes. This was a long playthrough. Really enjoyed it. And uh, I'm happy to have you guys along for the ride. All right, guys, take care of yourselves. Be well. See you later.